Hello, I'm Bradley and welcome to my channel. Today's clip is all about following on from my last video clip, which was about I'm cutting my hair, all to do with staying at home and around the coronavirus and the safety aspect of that. And really that it was time for me to have a bit of a freshener, bit of a kind of bit of a revamp of the size of my hair, which I have now done, and I am very pleased. So today I am rocking, I should say, a pompadour inspired look with a really short side with a real prominent defined line which meets down to the bottom of the nape of my neck exactly how I want my style. But there's a little bit more, so today's clip is all around about, which was a secret which I gave away in my last clip when I was telling you that I was cutting my hair, which actually you may think at first glance that somebody can't really cut hair, they're trying to cut the hair, it's going to be a disaster. Well actually this clip is all about explaining, so I have actually taught myself to be able to cut hair to an amateur level. Now what I want to get out there straight away is that I am not intended to take anything away from this industry or any professional that this is an easy thing to do, it certainly isn't. And, and to get where I have got, which is only very very amateur, I have literally spent that much time looking into it, looking into different techniques and really trying to teach myself. And yes, I have made mistakes, not on other people, but different different sort of scenarios with myself where, for example, I've never ever cut my sides before until the last clip which I've done. But when I was a little bit younger, a couple of years previous to that, and I had really short hair, I was always sort of making my haircut work a lot more longer for me, and I was cutting my hair myself. And I made mistakes and I learned from them then, um, and it's kind of made me stronger, especially coming into sort of doing fades. I don't necessarily have a faded cut, um, really ever to be honest with you because I always like a defined line but my twin brother always likes a bit more of a fade and certainly my oldest brother when I cut his hair who has tight curly hair always likes that blended faded look um, and that's something which I'm growing on and I'm getting better and better all the time. So that's giving a little, little bit more away so how am I able to cut hair to an amateur level and I was actually going on to say that this is not to take anything away from the professional industry itself it is not an easy thing to do and it takes a lot of skill and a lot of training and that is n that is because I'm not there and this whole industry deserves a lot of credit and it's certainly not an easy thing to do. So I just want to get that out there. I'm not taking that away from anybody. It's certainly not an easy thing to do. It's not where you can just look at a book or look online for a couple of minutes or even on YouTube and then you think you're a hairstylist or you're a barber because that's certainly not something you can do at all. It takes a lot of training. And I have to admit, over a number of years, I've been getting better and getting better with sort of scissor techniques, um, using clippers and sort of blending and my different techniques from that as well. I've over time spent quite a lot of money in a real decent quality set of clippers, in scissors, thinning shears, and all different sort of um, all different bits of equipment which you would need for cutting somebody's hair, and that includes sort of um, even brushes and, and combs and clips and all sorts of things. Um, but today is all really just to kind of give you a little bit more of an insight on what I can do and giving you a bit of proof actually. Um, so the people whose hair I have cut and this actually all began with my dear Nan, my glamorous lovely Nan who is soon to be 94 in June. Now I have stood with her throughout her whole battle of Alzheimer's and I was with her right to the start and I'm very very close to her and I will be there right throughout her journey. So how you may think does that link in? I'll tell you. My Nan was very very avid at the hair salon all the time. I remember my Nan having her hair done very very regularly from all sorts of styles. My nan has very, very big, sort of glamorous hair, and my nan was always like a film star, and still is, and literally any room she walked into, she would lighten it up. Um, but it wasn't intentional. She wasn't she wasn't vain and and she still isn't vain and she and she would never do it intentionally. She had this natural sort of glamorous awe about her. Very much like my mum has. And um I think it's something you either have or you haven't. Um, and my, my nan, um, my nan certainly did have that. So when my nan started to get um, worse with Alzheimer's, she kind of started to gradually lose the ability of being able to sort of connect and sort of having to be able to sit in a salon chair and having her hair done. Um, and gradually that sort of changed 
throughout having sort of um, mild symptoms, she was fine, absolutely fine. It was only just sort of like a, a memory problem. But when things became more of a struggle, um, that became really, really difficult. Um, so it was then really when I started to pick up the skill and started to sort of think, OK, it was a day where I remember going to see my nan and thinking that when, man, I would have hated to have had her hair like this. So I really needed to pick up the game on being able to assist and help my nan with this. She always said to my mum that she never, ever wanted to dye a grey haired lady. So my mum, bless her, has always kept that up together. And I help at times as well. But the cutting, she doesn't do. Um, where my nan is now, she has Alzheimer's and she is in the advanced stages of Alzheimer's, but she's still very well with it. Um, as I say, she's soon to turn 94 in June um, and she's my absolute world. She's such an amazing, amazing, beautiful character and she's just an amazing nan, an amazing person. So I do everything I can to keep her as my nan. Um, now you may think where my nan is now. So she is in, she is in uh, a complex for people with Alzheimer's who are living with Alzheimer's, but she, in a way, she's privileged because she has a really lovely apartment. She lives in like a complex, a care home for people of my nan's illness, but it's very modern. It's very lovely. Um, and, it, and it's really quite special and they do look after her well. I'm there all the time. So throughout this time of the coronavirus at the moment, not being able to go and see her because they are on lockdown to be able to protect the most vulnerable people in society. I can understand, but it's difficult. It was only actually last week where I was fortunately able to take my nan's Mother's Day stuff. It was Mother's Day here in the UK. Um, lovely gifts and things which my mum and me and my brothers, um, my uncle and my aunt had bought her. Um, but we had to do it for a glass door. And, you know, the most amazing heartwarming sort of honestly melting moment was when my nan was there, she actually put her hand to the glass and she didn't need to be prompted. And I put my hand to the glass. Um, so, yeah, really, really difficult. But getting back to my story. So that's that's why I learned. So I got better and better. So, for example, it started off short um, sort of things like, for example, when my nan's fringe started growing out, if I could see that it needed doing, I would do it. Um have I really made a mistake with my nan's hair? No, I haven't actually, to be honest with you. Um, and how? Through taking my time, through using using the, the right tools, I suppose, um, doing lots of research online, watching lots of clips on YouTube. Um, I know, it's strange, isn't it? And following lots of advice and different techniques. And this is why it's going to start to get interesting, because I am, and hopefully that you're interested in this anyway, because this is very important to me and it means an awful lot to me. Um, all very treasured people in my life. Um, and yeah, yeah, cutting cutting hair is an interest of mine. It's not something I would take into professional. It's just an interest. Um, wouldn't be what wouldn't be something I want to do all the time. Um, but it's a great attributing skill to have. So this is where it's going to get interesting. I'm going to talk you through this. I'm going to move slightly off to the side because what you're going to start to see now here is we're going to start with a picture of a style which I done for my lovely nan now bear in mind she is 93 and she has incredible incredible hair um my nan always has liked a fringe loads and loads of layers and loads of height and volume i remember as a small child with my nan literally standing in front of her mantelpiece in a lounge and literally my nan holding her hair up and then with this comb back combing literally the most damaging sort of thing ever with hair all out here um and my nan's always loved that style so still now she likes a lot of height a lot of volume loads of layers how did i do this look okay so how did i do this look so this is shortly after my mum had colored and i helped her do the hair um my nan's always kept to the same color and she still has the same color today um so i'm not going to show you the front because i don't want to be showing um Simply because of privacy, I don't really want to be shown uh, how I can't ask my nan. She wouldn't necessarily um, be able to understand necessarily with her condition. Um, and I just want to show you the back. So forgive me for that. But the front does look as amazing as the back does. Um, so what look have we got here and how did I do it? So I have literally used a couple of sectioning clips off and literally sectioned the top of my nan's hair off. And then we've come down a little bit lower. We've sectioned the mid section off all the way around. And then we've left the bottom out. So I've done it in three stages. And then underneath right at the bottom, what I've done is I have cut and I have literally taken my cu my cutting shears and I've literally sort of arrowed it down almost like what my nan used to call a page boy style. So sort of longer just past the ear and then sort of ever so longer towards the nape of the neck. So we've gone 
ever so shorter and then we've gone longer 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 and then to almost like a bit of a, a curved point at the back but really really nice and in a way what I've done then is I've taken the hair and I've worked my way up and I cut one length then we've gone a little bit shorter and then we've gone up again and then we've gone a little bit shorter up again so sort of three sections in that one section so small very fine amounts of hair cutting it very very gradually as we go in but blunt um, and I find that gives a really really nice look really nice choppy nice movement nice volume in the hair midsection what have I done then so the very top bit of that bottom section I've then met that and I've gone a little bit shorter again then I've gone ever so slightly shorter again and then ever so slightly shorter again so we're stepping it up so the whole look what I'm trying to achieve for my man here is longer at the bottom here at the neck so it's shorter up by around the ear and then it's longer at the neck and then we have gone from one length and we've gone ever so slightly shorter, ever so slightly shorter again. Then we're in that second section. So then we've met that with ever so slightly shorter, ever so slightly shorter again, and then ever so slightly shorter again. And on the top of the head, what I've done is I've literally started from the top of my nan's head. And at the back, what I have done is I've cut that ever so slightly shorter. So it's nice sort of stepped all the way up. And then I've kept that same length for about three, maybe four sections of hair. And then I've come ever so shorter. And then what I've done is I've chipped into the front ever so slightly, just so it sits up a little bit more higher. Because what I find is when I'm cutting or I'm sort of cutting into the hair, those shorter hairs will support the longer length of the hair. Um, very easy. What I have done sometimes is well, I've done my nails hairs, I've took the thinning shears and those finer hairs underneath will support the length of the top of the head as well. And hopefully you can see. You can't see the front, but hopefully you can see that there is a nice lot of layers all throughout the hair. And then what I've done to finish it off is I've grabbed a blow dryer and a round brush. And I've really got in there with some lifting, um, some root lifting uh, spray. And I have done a review for it. It's the Pan 10. Um, I can't quite remember the name of it, but I will add. I will. You will know it when you watch this clip because you'll see it across the bottom here, which I will make a point of doing. Um, so you'll see the picture, which you should be seeing here. And then at the bottom, I will make a note of the product, which I've done to Starman's hair. Um, and then what I've done is I've sprayed it all throughout the roots, took a brown brush and I blow dried each section through, pulled it right through from the scalp right the way outwards. And then the top, I've done exactly the same, lifted it up with a round brush all the way through. And then the fringe, I've done the opposite way and I've blown it blow dried it under so my nan had a nice blunt fringe and then she had all this volume and layers on the top and then right around to the back what did we do at the sides by her ears what we done is i took the round brush and then literally rounded it to her face so it looked a really really nice and glamorous look for my nan which is a very very glamorous lady okay so moving on you may think is that possible yes it is it took me an awful long time to be able to sort of and it's certainly not mastered but it looks really really good on my nan and i'm really so so pleased that i was able to replicate that look for her um moving on do my i'm not going to say talent because it's certainly not a talent there but i'm pleased i know how to do it um and i kind of my nan bless her because she and you may think does she go to a professional stylist she sees a professional hairdresser but she's extortionately expensive um, and she works with the care home which my nan uh, lives in um extortionately expensive but she kind of thinks that one style suits all so whenever she's done my nan's hair she's done it in tight curlers doesn't ever suit my nan never, never ever wore hair like that um it's not modern it's not kind of trendy and you may think being that she's 94 coming in june why would why would my nan want to be trendy modern yeah, she always was trendy, modern and always literally right on the point of new styles, trends and things. So that's what I try to do. But the style I always keep my nan is this style and it's absolutely lovely and suits her down to the ground. And it's something she would have loved. Moving on, what can I do next? So this is completely different. So this is my amazing mum. So again, very, very glamorous lady, has very, very long hair, uh, black hair. Um, now you may think, what do I do here? So my mum likes a, she had gone from, for many, many years, lots and lots and lots of layers. So for a time, what I was doing with my mum was stopping all these very, very expensive visits. And we were gradually working the hair down, growing the hair down, getting rid of those layers. So each time what that was, was finding each layer. So sectioning the hair off again in about three or four sections. So the bottom of the head, middle of the head and then the top and working through literally very painstakingly with a, a pair of cutting shears. So proper hairdressing shears and then just literally going through each section, not putting the layer back in, but just blunting it out. So each time blunting it off. So if there were really, really sort of up and down hairs. So I mean, like if it's layered, it can seem quite wispy. So making sure all those ends are cutting off blunt, not taking a large bit off. My mum never wanted to lose much length all in one go. So what we then done was 
each time. So every couple of weeks, I would go through my mum's hair and literally work through a pair of hair cutting shears and make everything blunter and blunter and blunter to the point on this picture what we have now got is a really blunt look at the bottom so it's very very long very very blunt um, and this is on all one length look again because of privacy my mum didn't want to show um, on this clip at all which is absolutely fine I asked her um, permission and I didn't think she'd want to anyway and I want to keep my channel all about me I don't want to start including sort of family members and things on here because it's privacy you never know um there's so many different things on this channel I just really want to keep it really really private um and really dignified and really really nice and um just sort of that really really lovely sort of air about it um so the back hopefully you can appreciate that um but the front looked just as amazing there is no fringe on my mom at all it is layers from the bottom of her chin literally to the the length which is about halfway down her back and that's sort of layered and how i do that is really really quite i i hope i've almost mastered the technique of that is literally pulling the section off just by about the ear here so just behind Literally, you take the front of your ear here, then go back a little bit further, section the whole front of the hair off on both sides, front that, section this off in the front, basically, cut it, um, comb it right back here, so literally taking the whole section of the hair right back, combing it right back, and then the whole front section, so from the ear, literally just sort of about the point of the ear, so you've got the main front of the ear here, then I go back ever so slightly, back ever so slightly, then I find that sort of point all the way up, and then all the way up in the scalp here, and then I take that front section, and then I divide it out through the middle part in which you won't see here, but my mum has a middle part in, and on one side, what I've done is I've pulled it out through the front and then cut it down, and that looks strange, but it's quite difficult for me to explain without actually showing you that I've literally held it out straight and then cut it, and on both sides I've done exactly the same, and then when the hair comes down, what you should see is a look You've got shorter layer and then sort of like this diagonal line in the front if it was straightened out you see this diagonal line here on my mum and then whatever little hairs are out of place i've then just gone in with a pair of the cutting shears which i have and then i've just cut it back in nice and sleek and blunt and straight so it looks really modern really trendy then what have i done to finish it so you may think because of course my mum's perfectly healthy she doesn't need anybody to style her hair off i have though on here so i can see that the cut's really really nice then what i've done is i've just taken a really big um blow drying brush blow dry the hair down through for her and then as you can see with that slight roundness through we've just passed the straightener through the hair all the way through which actually my mum done because i don't need to do that and as you can see the back is really lovely really nice blunt and it's a nice soft feminine look and it looks really really cool as well and it looks really really glamorous and sweeps my mum down to the ground so there's another look which yes i can do and it does take me quite a long time but it saves money and it extends those visits to of course those very often expensive hair salons let's move on so this is my twin brother i have not included his face again because i want to keep this really private um and i don't necessarily want to share sort of family members on here um i will be covering my twin brother will be featuring on my channel in the future but for now i just want to keep everybody covered um and just the back of the head but you will be seeing a picture of my brother's style before and after which i didn't actually do with my nan's cuts or my mum's so you'll see when i talk about my nan you'll see her on the screen here then when you'll see my mum you'll see her on the screen here as well but now what you should be seeing is my twin brother and let's start off with a before shot so here as you can see his sides have outgrown um and yeah just needs cutting back in so what style does my brother usually go for short choppy hair he is a fantastic chef very professional here there and everywhere in his role um really really high flying so he needs a style to be able to work for him and he doesn't like things to take too much time and he always uses my hair products let's just get that one out there as well very expensive products as well he always seems to be able to choose the most expensive ones over the cheaper ones and that's what i go through past this but there we go it's not a problem so what cut does he like so as much as i always try to get him to have a blended cut he likes very much like me a very prominent very defined line um so he has very similar to myself but he always likes the line up much higher which you will see because i will be transforming our before shot to an after shot which you will be seeing now and we have a defined line much much higher on the top and from the picture what you should be able to see we have kept some 
length and then what we have done is I've cut everything very very blunt on top so at the back what we've done I always try to get him to have a bit more of a feature like me where it uh, comes down to a bit of a fade and you've got a bit of a point at the nape of the neck but he likes a very sort of defined line all the way around and then we dip down ever so slightly so it looks really nice really modern really trendy and I hope you agree really really is very professional looking even though i don't proclaim to be a professional i'm very very amateur and i am still learning all the time as as people like myself are probably trying cutting there are mistakes but in these cut, cuts and overall styles there are no mistakes and the people my nan my mum and my brother were very very happy with the overall look and all three have had compliments from other people as well which is nice because it always makes you feel like i'm doing something right bearing in mind these people all see professional hairdressers but it, i extend their cut and and I enjoy what I do and it just saves them money. It's a really nice bonding thing um, and it's really, really, really cool to do. And it's a um, bit of a bit of a hidden, I don't want to say talent, but a bit of a hidden skill I have as well. So what you should be seeing on the screen here as well that we have done. Now, this is a naught to a 0 0.5 on my brother at the sides here. And we got really, really high. So it lasts nice and long for him. And he, out of my, my nan, my mum and him, he is probably the one who never really sees, um, very rarely. So he goes to see a professional barber at times, but very, very rarely. Um, it's usually me who he comes to to do it. Um, but you will see that his sides are really, really tapered short. We've got a zero up to a 0 0.5, and then I leave a really defined line. Um, and then what I do is around that line, I just literally section the longer length of the hair off and clip that out of the way. And the hair, what, like this bit of hair here, what you'll see on me, I haven't faded this or I haven't cut into this at all, but with him, just so I can take some of the weight out because his hair is shorter, because mine's longer, I like to leave that defined line there because when I wear a pompadour style, I don't like everything to blend in. Whereas for him, because it's shorter and it's choppy and he, and he just takes a bit of product, throws it through his hair and really sort of spiky and choppy and lots of movement and wave in his hair. Looks really, really cool. But like what I like to do is I like to take this bit of hair equivalent on him, which we'll see in the picture. And I take my thinning shears. I just chip into it a little bit, take some of the weight out so it blends ever so slightly and then cut it down ever so slightly as well, which hopefully you will see from the cut as well. And you will certainly see from the before shots that it looks completely different, much more modern, much more sleek, much more professional and very, very masculine. And I can absolutely confirm he was very, very pleased with the cut. OK, so as you'll see from those images there that if you didn't believe it, yes, I can to an amateur level cut hair. It's something which I do enjoy. Um, still developing skills, of course, and trying new things all the time. Um, but yeah, really, really good. So other people's hair who I do cut. So very often, sometimes I will cut my dad's hair and I will cut my older brother's hair as well. So my older brother has really tight curly hair, so of course that's a different challenge again. But he has a very faded style and then really, really short on the top, about a finger's length of hair left on top. He has really tight curly hair if he lets it grow through. And then the sides, we do a fade. So from about a one all the way then up to about a two, and then I fade it through. It takes quite a lot of time with scissors and then possibly like a three as well. So it looks really, really smart and blended. Um, and then going to my dad, he has about a four on the sides and on the top, we leave a lot more length. Um, I have to admit, all of my family are very blessed in their hairline. They don't necessarily have any thinning or anything like that at all. Um, just probably my my brother, my second eldest brother, has some thinning degree of thinning going on. I don't actually cut his hair. He cuts his own, believe it or not. Um, so maybe it runs in the family. Um, but yeah, whoever I, whoever's hair I cut, I haven't made mistakes. I haven't actually made too many mistakes myself, just kind of learning curves. Um, so what I always try to do, if I'm a little bit nervous or I don't think it's going to go quite right, I always do it a little bit longer and then I've got that room for error if anything should happen. Or I always start off with a higher guard, so a three or four, which is longer on the clippers. And then when I know what I'm doing and I've got that shape, then I go back in and do it shorter. And then actually that makes a really nice sort of way to get a really nice fade in as well. And then I always go in, go in with um i can't actually remember the name of it but i've got it's like um like a like a trimmer which does not a nice smart edge and then i go back in and i do that with a nice edge all the way through as well just to create that nice sleekness as though you've been to the barbers so what products do we use in these pictures just running through very very quickly so my nan i used a pantene root boosting product which i will put the name against my nan's picture which we've seen so hopefully you will have seen that where my mum we didn't use anything at all I don't I can't speak for my mum I think she may have used some sort of heat protectant in her hair I don't know which she used at all so unfortunately I can't come on that one um 
but very rarely does she use heat on her hair. Um, my twin brother uses every product under the sun, so every product which I have probably got on my channel when I've reviewed, he's probably used. So take from that what you may. Okay, thanks very much for watching my clip, and until next time, we will see you then. Bye-bye now.